lot of these schools are bringing in a lot of money due to the sports programs. I definitely believe that the college athletes should get compensated in some other way than just the education. Uh, as a former player, I do. Not everybody's college experience is the same. There's a lot of injustice you don't see, and some that's right there in front of your face, especially for the student athlete. That term is interesting. Some go to school to be students, and some go to school to be employees masquerading as athletes. Like I said, not everybody's college experience is the same. A lot of people ask me why I was doing this documentary. And I think that for me, it was a matter of I wanted to just bring light to an issue that I can only imagine if I was actually involved in it, if I was, say, a student athlete, how upset I would be in some of the things that I have to deal with. And like it, it's, it's just something that kind of breaks my nerves and you know I wanted to get guys opinions on it and one of the main things with, the, with the, doing something like this shooting something like this it's difficult to get access because players are just trying to hold on to what they have you know coaches don't want to talk to you in every case but in some cases you do have coaches that want to talk to you and you do have players that want to talk to you but they don't want their face shown or you know, they, they don't want to blow up what they have going, you know. If you're a coach, you want to keep your job. If you're a player, you know, you don't you don't want to be suspended by the NCAA, which I, I still don't know what their actual function is, like, other than let's just let's just find a way to keep money out of, you know, the athletes' pockets. That's that's what we can do. The terms kind of like it's, it's kind of like blended, you know, because if I say, OK, I want to be a, just a student and then I got to focus on being an athlete as well. So I got to cross in. You got to you got to you got to have good time management because, first of all, you got to do your work, because if you don't do your work, then you're not eligible to be an athlete. So now you got to mix in time to be a great athlete and a great student. So you got to, you know. Again, study hall, tutoring, extra time to do, you know, look at your books on your own. Not to mention, okay, hey, what were you doing? I was studying. Okay, now I need to go and get into the gym. Now I need to shoot some exercise, lift some extra weights, go to practice, you know, uh, make sure I'm, I'm eating correctly. So it's a lot of blended, you know, blended storylines within the student athlete. Education comes first in anything you do. Now, in the realm of which the NCAA is using it, classifying a student athlete as, a, as an amateur, then they don't have to pay an amateur. However, these guys are going out and putting in professional work day in and day out, just like they go to work, they go to a job day in and day out, and what they have to show for it. Concussion, a torn ACL. Not to mention those guys, when that happens, they get thrown by the wayside and you never hear about them anymore. 
So now their dream of being able to earn that big money that they've been playing football since the age of six for, or shooting basketball since the age of six for, that's gone. Yeah, uh, my mom and dad weren't together. I was solely taken care of by my mom, my brother and I. And when, when I went off to school, my brother is still in high school. So she's having to shell out money for a lot of his stuff. I'm on scholarship getting to eat free in the cafeteria, but that's all I can do. I have to find ways to put gas in my car. I have to find ways to do activities such as bowling movies with a friend or a girlfriend. And it's tough, so my mom struggled and uh, I struggled all the way through college as far as money was concerned. A lot of the guys who are at school, they came from poverty. So they don't come from a background where it's gonna be money readily available for them. My mother is sending me money. No, my mom is still working while I'm in school. So at this point in time, I don't have money to give to her. But how can you fully take advantage of your education if, <clears throat> if your main purpose is going to school to be an athlete? You know, mentally, mentally what they mentally what they're going through, mentally what they're asked to do. I mean, it's, it's a huge burden. Make no mistake about it, man. It's, it's huge. Wisconsin basketball player Nigel Hayes is making a statement. As ESPN's College Game Day made a visit to his school, he carried around a sign that read, Broke College Athlete, Anything Helps. He included a handle for a Venmo account. Hayes was previously vocal on Twitter about his disapproval of how college athletes don't profit from the NCAA's large financial gains. You see, they always hit players, the gears that run this giant machine known as college athletics with, but you are getting paid theoretically. You're getting a college education. But the cost of that college education doesn't amount to nearly the amount of money these players make for these institutions of higher learning. I mean, you can just look at, you know, across all the campuses across, you know, across America. You know, this is an issue that, of course, that has been raised by the NCAA and by the, you know, um, student athletes about this very nature of being paid. Uh, it's not a matter of, you know, trying to get rich you know, offer, you know, being an amateur athlete at that point. But a, a fact of just having enough money to just to survive the basics of just college life. Definitely believe the NCAA should pay the players, man. I mean, these guys are going out, putting in hard work, their blood, sweat, and tears. They should be compensated in some monetary fashion other than the quote unquote free education. You know, free education, it ain't free. I still gotta get up and go to class. I still gotta do everything that that student that's, get, that, that's there on student loans or there because mom and dad can pay for them. I still gotta do all that they're doing because I, I have to graduate. But then I'm also getting up at four o'clock in the morning, put my body through something that they don't even know exists. When you're in college, you can't get a job. You're too busy with practice, school, study hall, all these different things. So you're on scholarship, but all you get is those three meals the cafeteria give you, nothing else. And these guys still gotta live life. You know, you still gotta live life. If, you know, a school's dining plan is, is giving you three meals a day, and you eat like, you know, 10 times what the average person eats because you're burning all that stuff up on the field, on, you know, on a basketball court or whatever. How is that even remotely fair? Nick Chubb is still down. Yeah, and, and that's a, a nightmare scenario for Georgia fans. Remember, it was on this field two years ago that Keith Marshall was injured, injured, and oh, the finish of that run is scary. It looked like he hyperextended his leg as he stuck. Watch him try to get it. Yep. Oh, no. The left knee. Oh boy. 
You know, I say it all the time, Vern. These players lay their careers out on the line every play. Every play. Of course, injuries are a huge part of sports, but the burden being put on some of these athletes can be gigantic, especially when being asked to rehab these injuries. I spoke with owner and physical therapist Robert Zubik of Aware Physical Therapy about some of the most common injuries for athletes and what it can mean for their athletic careers and beyond. I'd say the biggest type is some kind of knee injury. Uh, in particular, uh, a lot of uh, ACL, anterior cruciate ligament tears, uh, medial collateral ligament tears, medial meniscus tears. Probably knee injuries are probably the most common thing that I find. Repetitive stress on that body part, uh, you'll find a lot of degeneration. It usually happens long term. Um, so in this, uh, you, you might have the wear and tear of that joint, which possibly down the road could lead to uh, future, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years later that they wind up having to have maybe a joint replacement in particular um, could be one aspect of it. So, so just normal, uh, just expedited uh, breakdown of the body, uh, I'd say, is, is one of the things that we find with uh, injuries later on. The risk is real for athletes with potential injury to bones and ligaments, but with what we now know about concussions, these may be the most serious injuries with the worst long-term effects. What is the worst injury you ever had playing football and how bad did it you? know, you, I like to say something that hurts right away, you know, that you, 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 um, you get and you know, you go to the doctor and they, they do surgery on you or whatever it is and you back at it. But that's not the case, man. Like my, my worst injury that I had that affects me still to this day was the concussions. And I know there's a huge push on the concussions and, and what they do to the brain. Now, would I change playing football for so I could not have concussions? No. I'm telling you now, no, I wouldn't. But I would also say, you know, that's the worst one I had because of the symptoms that come along with it. You know, the aggressive behavior at times, um, the, the forgetfulness that I have at times. Um, it's to the point where I have to be in a routine every day and I got to follow that routine like I count from one to 10 or A to, a to Z. You know, doing alphabet from A to Z. If I don't do that and it's disrupted, it's bad. You know, uh, suffering with migraines, things like that from from the head trauma, man. I mean, that's my biggest injury. There are times when you you you're walking around with a constant headache, but you just figured that's part of it. You know, because you you know somebody's rung your bell in in a game or in practice or what have you. But you just think that's a part of the part of the culture. Um, as far as an injury that would prevent one from just actually in the in the moment performing, um, our bodies are limited in what we can do. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Well, of course, I think this year because they put in a hard effort in playing football, basketball, etc. There are more better things that you can do than than paying a college student who, uh, the, like the people who play for Duke or Villanova or Carolina or something like that, who already have all this shit lined lined up for them to go, all this shit lined up for them to go into the NBA and make a ridiculous amount of money. And they know it's a racket, but yet they won't pay the players. And then also with this whole sports betting thing, they're gonna stand the game more with the sports betting thing and still not wanna pay athletes what they're due. And even if they just give them some money, you gotta pay them everything, but just give them, compensate them some, because they're getting paid entirely too much money. It's, it's still a full-time job. I think that if a school is getting, you know, getting money from selling tickets and all that kind of stuff, then the people that are, are um, pretty much putting on the performance, whether it's on a, a sports style thing or anything else, 
uh, they should get reimbursed in some way because they're they're kind of creating that revenue for the school. Um, so it's one of those things too where it's kind of hard to differentiate between um, the person that's third string and first string and who gets the amount of money, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think it's it would be difficult for them to do, but obviously it is possible. I mean, I guess they know what they're getting themselves into, but I mean, still. Regardless of whatever side of the fence you fall on, it's clear that these issues need to be addressed for the sake of the student athlete going forward. If you were being like recruited all over again, and there was a league or something that you could go to to make like a, you know, maybe not pro money, but let's just say something that would like triple your scholarship dollars or something like that, you know what I'm saying? You make like a decent amount of money, say mm -hmm. like, Say something that pays you like a hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. As opposed to playing for free and trying to get an education, what would you do? What do you think that? Which way do you think that you would go on that? I would like to say I would still go to college to get my education. I would like to say that, but the reality is that's not going to happen. You know, if I'm if, if if I'm being offered some type of money to play a sport and it's in the realm of six figures, that changes my family's dynamics right there. It's almost like, you know, when the high school athletes that play basketball went straight from high school to NBA, guess what they can do? They can pay for a college education then. You out there playing, you out there practicing, doing everything the right way. I believe that you deserve to get paid a little bit because you're helping bring in the revenue. How hard is it to raise all this money with? ticket sales and um, concessions, and you can't give each player on the squad a little something each month. I believe it can be done. I believe it will be done here in the near future. Now, me personally, it would be good for everybody to get a stipend from the top to the bottom. At least some money to walk around with, you know what I mean? As a, as a just, just being a walk around money, I want to get a soda, hey, let me buy a soda. I done heard stories of kids being at 12 o'clock at night. The training table is not open for them to eat and they don't have any money, you know, to, to, to get a soda, to get a drink, you know what I mean? And that, that's ridiculous, you know what I mean? Seeing as how much money they just made last night for the university playing in the basketball game. That doesn't make any sense. Keep in mind, many major college athletes don't come from money in affluent backgrounds. Many come from poverty and that basketball or football scholarship is considered their ticket to getting them and their families out of those circumstances. But that's tenuous at best. Remember, scholarships are year-to-year -year propositions. Stability isn't necessarily the reality for many student athletes, and everybody doesn't come from neighborhoods that look like this. So what's the solution? If players are being asked to carry this entire system, why shouldn't they be fairly compensated? The bottom line is, everybody is being taken care of except for the athletes. We should be trying to find a way to give the power to the players, but that would be too much like right.